RF man here. Today I just want to demonstrate two different radios. My striker, it's a 955 HP, and I have a, a Kenwood TS450S. And I just want to compare the modulation of each radio. So what I have set up first is my Kenwood transceiver, and I've got that going into a minus 6 dB attenuator and then I've got an RF sampler and then I've got a watt meter to monitor the output power. I'll be testing it at relatively low power levels. Um, I've also compared the output and measurements of, of this meter. It's a, it's a dia, diwa, sorry, and compared it to my Bird 43. Okay, and then I'm using, as you can see down there, just a 50 ohm purely resistive dummy load. So, what I'd like to do is first just demonstrate the modulation. So, I've got the sampler connected directly to the scope. And if I key up, you will, you will see basically some carrier wave, continuous wave. Let me try turning down the intensity a little bit so this is this is clearer. Yeah, that I think that helps. Okay, so I'm just going to key up. And there you see a constant carrier wave. Okay, now let me just change the uh, the voltage per setting so we have a little bit more room on the scope and reposition this to the center. Okay, we're going to key up again. Okay, there's the carrier wave. Now, when I modulate, okay, if you notice that the carrier wave is about two divisions high and the modulated signal does not exceed the level of the carrier wave. So you can see as I'm talking, you can see the envelope of the modulated signal. This is the peak power and you can see it does not exceed the amplitude of the constant carrier wave. So you can see there, one, two, one, two. Now I'm going to go ahead and compare this to my striker radio, and you'll be able to see the difference. Okay, so now I'm back, and I've got the striker set up. Same way, there's my minus 6 dB attenuator, my RF sampler. Okay, the power level is the same, and I'm going into the dummy load. So it's the exact same setup. So now I'm just going to key up and you'll be able to see the constant carrier wave. Okay, so there it's about two divisions high. Okay, now I'm going to modulate with the striker. Audio, 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 check, 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 check. One, two, one, two. As you can see, that the modulated carrier wave goes well above the amplitude of the continuous wave. So the envelope is, is much higher. So I wanted to show this so that people would understand that not all radios are the same. Okay, now this is the factory setting for the striker. It can actually be turned up even higher than that. Um, but I left it at, at the factory level. And strikers are known for their modulation and their swing, even at very low levels of power. That was about one watt or so. Okay, and you can see the modulation. There's a dramatic difference in the amplitude of the modulated envelope when compared to the Kenwood. So when you're using one of my amplifiers, for example, the LD Moss amplifier, the amount of PEP power that you get and the amount of swing is really going to depend on your radio. I've said this in other videos, but I just wanted to demonstrate this. Okay, um, and when you look at the Kenwood specification, okay, under modulation, I don't know how well you can see that, okay, but you see modulation AM, it says low level modulation. So that's how this particular radio is designed. But again, all radios are different, depends on your radio. You, you could just key up and measure the swing and get a good idea of how it's modulating. And if you have an oscilloscope, and a sampler, you can actually look at it visually and get a good idea of how it modulates. So, so I just wanted to show that to everyone. 
check, 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 audio, audio, that there is a difference in the modulation and this will make a difference in the output of your linear amplifier. And that's true for bipolar or LDMOS. Okay, so RF man, thanks. All right, so now I'm back. And we're gonna take a look at the modulation now on a watt meter to see how the watt meter behaves. Again, comparing the Kenwood with the striker. So I'm using the same setup. There's my attenuator and my RF sampler. We can still look at the waveform on the scope. Now I have my bird meter in line. So I got a bird 43 line section. I'm using a 10 watt slug. So I'm just doing this at low power right now. And same dummy load as you can see down there. And we'll just go ahead and dead key this and look at the dead key. All right, a little over a watt. Okay, you can see it's the bottom scale there. So two watts, four watts, six watts, etc. Um, not that critical for this for this test. So now I'll go ahead and dead key and modulate. Audio, and you see there's a little bit of backward swing there from this radio. And if we go ahead and put on the peaking kit, okay, we do the same thing. I think. It's pretty easy to predict what will happen here. You're not going to get much, much swing out of this. Audio, audio, audio. Very little swing. And that's because the modulated signal isn't going above the amplitude of the constant carrier wave. So now let's go ahead and look at the striker. See what. Okay, so now we're going to demonstrate the modulation with the striker radio. I'm on 10 meters, same frequency, 28.505, and same setup as you can see there. So now we'll just go ahead and we'll dead key. So we've got about a watt or so, it's not that critical. And now we'll modulate with the meter in RMS. Audio, audio. So you see we get some forward swing there. That's what you'd expect looking at the waveform on the oscilloscope. And we'll go ahead and put it on peak. Audio. And you can see I can peg the meter very easily. Um, so this is the difference between radios. You saw the waveform on the oscilloscope and now we see the effects on a on a watt meter looking at the RMS or average and then the PEP. So again I hope this is helpful to everyone. Alright so now I'm back again and I've got my dual LD MOS amplifier set up here. This is actually my R&D board so you see these hold down clamps here and here. Um, I can't drive this board to the full power output. The devices are not soldered into the board. It's only the clamps that are holding the tabs down to make contact with the board and also the clamps holding it down to the heat sink. Um, so I'm gonna keep this test to about a thousand watts. That's where I can safely operate this board. Um, if you want to see a demonstration on the full peak power, I do have other videos out there. So I have the Kenwood set up again on 10 meters and I've got the power output to about a, a thousand watts or so. So we'll see that on the, on the bird. About a thousand watts. And now we're going to put the peaking kit on. Sorry about that, the video. It's, it's hard to do this one-handed. But we'll put the peaking kit on. We'll modulate. Audio, audio, audio. And you see uh, almost no forward swing at all. And remember when we looked at the oscilloscope and we looked at the carrier wave and the amplitude of the carrier wave when we modulated we saw that the modulation the envelope didn't go 
above the carrier. So this makes perfect sense. All right, there's not going to be any any peak output. Okay, with with this type of modulation. Uh, now we'll go ahead and look at the striker. All right, so now I'm back with the striker radio, uh, same setup, and I'm going to go ahead and just dead key. It's like about a thousand watts dead key. And now we'll go ahead and put this on PEP with a genuine bird peaking kit in there. And I'll go ahead and modulate. Audio! Looks like about 2,000. So it's swinging about a thousand watts. Okay, so I think it's pretty easy to understand why. When we look at the waveform on the oscilloscope, we see that the modulation was well above the amplitude of the carrier wave, that that modulated envelope was, was much higher, and that's basically what gives us the drive and the, the PEP and swing. So how do you address this if your radio is uh, low, low modulation? Um, you can go in and adjust the AM modulation pot, turn it up. I've done this successfully on my ICOM 735. Um, it, it did modulate above the carrier, but I was able to, to peak it up a little bit and it performed much better. So there are things, there are things you can do to improve the PEP in this one. So anyway, I hope this was, was helpful. I get a lot of questions about that. I'm not getting the same swing and I try to explain the, the differences and why. Remember, it's a linear amplifier. Okay, so what you put in is what you get out. And this is true with bipolar, MOSFETs, uh, VD MOS, LD MOS, all these technologies. So again, hope it was helpful. RF man.